now that we have gone through how to customize the dashboard, in this video, we will specifically focus in on the widgets and explain the different ones available. Then, we will enter data for the child's second vaccination round that we scheduled in a previous video. Let's take a closer look at some of the widgets available and what they are used for. The Enrollment widget shows the programs the child is enrolled in and the location of enrollment. It also allows you to manage the status of the enrollment, mark the child for follow-up, and delete the child from the program. The Indicators widget can be used to show the calculated value of any of the indicators for the selected program. In this example, the age indicator is automatically calculated and displayed. The profile widget shows the attributes of the child that were entered during registration. In this widget, you can also edit the enrollment attributes. The notes widget allows users to make notes on the child. For example, why is an enrollment terminated? Or what is the overall observation of the tracked entity throughout the enrollment? The relationship widget allows you to relate the child with others that are in the system. In this example, we could relate the particular child to another child in the program, or even relate a child to a parent in a separate program. We could relate siblings or a mother and their child if they are both registered within DHIS2, regardless of the program they are receiving services for. With these reviewed, let's update the data for our case. Remember, we wanted to enter data on the child's second set of vaccinations occurring at six weeks. We will select the scheduled event and enter a date of services given. In our example, this date will be the same as the date we scheduled the service to occur. After we select the date, we can see that the form opens, allowing us to enter data. Also notice that this box is now yellow as the event is open. The fields that now appear are different from the first time when we opened the form. The vaccines that are now listed are the ones scheduled to be given at six weeks. This is an important concept to note as it demonstrates how we can take specific guidelines and work practices and implement them within DHIS2 when designing a tracker program. We can fill in the immunization details and mark down that the child received all of her vaccinations as scheduled. Once we have filled in the necessary details, we can proceed to complete this event. This time, we can select Complete and Exit to be taken back to the front page list. We hope you found the demonstration of the Tracker Capture app useful. This was introductory in nature as we are focusing on event programs in this course. There is functionality that has not been covered in this overview, but this should give you an idea of how Tracker program data are collected in DHIS2. Let's highlight what we have learned in this subsection. We learned how to select the correct tracker program you wish to enter data for. We described the layout and options of the Tracker Capture app. We demonstrated how to search for a tracked entity. We learned how to register a tracked entity to a program. 
and how to fill in program stage details, along with demonstrating how skip logic can be used. We scheduled a new event, and we described the widgets available in Tracker Capture. We hope you have been following along with the step-by-step -step activities listed under the videos. But if you haven't, please refer to them for extra practice to help ensure the understanding of the information presented on Tracker Programs and the web-based Tracker Capture app. Have a look at the final activity for this subsection, where you will explore the dashboard further and update data for a child's second immunization visit. When you have completed all of the activities, proceed to Module 6, Subsection 2. If you have any questions so far, please use the discussion forum to ask them, and other learners or facilitators can help.